All right, we've been talking about Cain and Abel, but we were seeing a pattern uh, in uh, the parable of the vineyard. And uh, so we were going to look, we had been looking, but we never finished it. Matthew? Mateo 21. <laughs> 33. <laughs> Hasta cuer cuarto uno. <laughs> Cuatro hay uno. Yeah. Uh, 33 through 41. 33, sorry. 30. Okay. Um, so beginning with verse 33. <clears throat> Here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it round about and digged a wine press in it and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. Verse 34, and when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits of it. Verse 35, and the husbandman took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. Um, okay, and Let's see, I think we'll, um, for some reason I didn't put that in my book, verse 37, but basically the father says, maybe I will send my son and they will reverence him. So verse 38, but when the husbandmen saw the son, they were, they said among themselves, this is the heir, come, let us kill him. And let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard and slew him. When the Lord, therefore, the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? They say unto him, he will miserably destroy those wicked men and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits of their seasons. Um, so in relationship to Cain and Abel, then, we had the, situ the, the situation where <clears throat> um, Cain rose up against Abel. And we put that in the context of the firstborn as opposed to, uh, if you will, Israel, if we, re if we hearken back to Exodus. Um, and the two groups that came out of the Exodus. And so here we see that same spirit. And, and I don't know if you noticed, but I mean, see, we're talking about Cain and Abel, but then we came here with a similar situation, and Jesus <clears throat> talks about the parable of the vineyard with these people and the son. But Jesus is the heir. Jesus is the firstborn. And the ones he's talking to are the ones who's going to kill him. And they don't hear it at all, personally. You know, I've been using that little phrase a lot lately. In their, sto in their story, in his story, the story that he's telling about the parable, they sort of hear that. And they can make a right judgment. Well, what will, he, what will the father do? What will be done? Well, they, you know, he will miserably, but they have no, there is no compunction of guilt. There's no recollection of the issues, but there's a recollection of his teaching. All right, so does that apply to us today? Yes. Um, there is, there has to come forth within us, within our being, there has to rise forth 
a reaching spiritually unto God our Father by the Son instead of us just always praying in his name. We're in the Son. You, when you pray in his name, you're praying as one in the Son and that the Father recognizes the Son. It's, there's a, there's a heart that says, I don't want to just read the stories in the Bible and nod my head like these men did and say, I get it. When they are right in the midst of not getting it. <clears throat> well, how do we avoid that? We avoid that by, number one, being so serious that we really do want the Lord and that we are going to press in and we're going to say, <clears throat> you know, maybe, maybe like these even, maybe like these people who are responding to Jesus, Lord, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't, I don't, <clears throat> I don't see yet. <clears throat> it's not an issue of just continually not seeing. It's an issue of, it's not an issue of magically making yourself see, because you can't do that. It's an issue of talking to the Father through the Son, the firstborn, the accepted one, the one that can reach his heart and say, Father, I don't, I don't get it. But you place me in, in union, in the Son, in union with him. And I want in a real way for what's in him to flow through me and out of me unto others and, unto, and out of me up unto you like a sweet incense. That you're, there's an altar. There's an altar in your heart. Um, you know, I'm not perfect, but I tell you what, I pray a lot in this spirit. When I pray, this is the spirit I pray in because, and I see results because, and I don't mean I see results in me. I, he's the result, so I would hope I do, but, but I'm not talking about results. I'm talking about there is an approach. You ever heard this about approach? Approach is important. It's important throughout the Bible. You would be shocked to, to go through and think in terms of approach. Look at Cain and Abel. One's approach was this, and the other's approach was this. And God made the younger one the heir, the beloved son, the firstborn, when he didn't deserve it. Or let's say it like this, where it wasn't rightfully his. But it was. It becomes rightfully yours when it's the son. When you're offering up the son instead of the fruit of the, the cursed ground. Meaning our, our wasteland, our lives, the wasteland of our lives, the digging and toiling of our lives and then offering that up. No, you give him the lamb of his heart. You give him the lamb of his heart. You, you know what you give him? You give him the lamb that he gave you. Amen. You give him the lamb that he gave to you. And what am I talking about? I'm not talking about at this moment, I'm not talking about in the fullness of your life. I'm talking about in prayers trying to get to a place where it would be the fullness of your life. You see what I'm saying? I'm not talking, yes, one day, Lord, but right now, I want to give you your lamb in my approach. And then the father says, I recognize my son. My, um, he he sees that there's an altar, and the altar really is that you're on it, and the son is the one that you're calling for to, to, to bring the glory of it, not you, not your death. <clears throat> so, um, 
So they say unto him, they, this is verse 41, they say unto him, he will miserably, talking about the father, he will miserably destroy those wicked men, uh, I'm adding in here, that killed his son, his firstborn, and will uh, let out his vineyard or lease out his vineyard unto other husbandmen which shall render him which will render him the fruits in their seasons. Amen. So, um, well, I read this last time, but I'm leading up to being able to, to get to what we want to talk about tonight. So I'm just going to read this. So, so the ones in the, in the story Jesus tells and the failures on their part to grasp these realities, but they're not realities. They're not great teachings. They're not a plan. They are realities of the heart of the Father for his son. All right, well, we've heard that. So what impact will this have tonight? You understand what I'm saying? What impact can this possibly have? Because we've heard that. Well, the impact has to be profound or it's no impact at all. And it didn't impact them. And so the people in the story and that Jesus is telling, not the story that he's living or the story we're in yet, the people in the story, they assume that murder and envy and discontent will make them the firstborn. I will kill the heir. I will, I will, I will deal with this situation. Well, the heir isn't always Jesus, like Jesus standing over there. The heir is the beloved son, and the beloved son is the one who can manifest in mortal flesh. <clears throat> and that's where he sees his son now. I mean, he's got him at his right hand, but folks, he put him in us. And some, sometimes some people let him manifest. But it shouldn't be sometimes. You know, the goal, we should have a goal, amen? And our goal isn't a bigger church or this or that or whatever. The goal is an increase of Christ to our decrease. That's called memorial ministry. What if a whole, well, what if a whole church said, he must increase and we must decrease? Well, the emphasis would shift dramatically. <laughs> it would shift so much. <clears throat> Because we, we wouldn't have to be protecting everybody. We wouldn't have to be babysitting at times. We would simply impart Christ one to another. And if we all agreed with that, you know, if we all agreed, I'm talking about any church, but if we all agreed with that, you can't go wrong with more of Jesus and less of us. <clears throat> anyway. There's your good example of memorial ministry. <laughs> he must increase or we must decrease. <clears throat> All right, so uh, little did they know that by killing him, the stone that was rejected has become the head of the corner. Uh, okay, so th this happened with Abel. This happened with Abel in a, in a bigger way maybe than you've recognized, but we, we're yet to get to that because we've just now got to Cain killing Abel. But you'll see which one is the accepted, the beloved son when we get down here with Cain and Abel. <clears throat> and you, you see it with Jesus. You see, there's really one story that we all should have. <laughs> there really is. And it's not the one we read about. It's the one that we make our story. This is going to be my story. I'm not going to be the wicked ones that 
that are, are trying to be something before God because we're nothing before God. But he is everything, so let's give him what he, he wants. Let's satisfy him with the lamb of his heart. <clears throat> so, in verse 42, and by the way, um, let me just read verse 42. Jesus said, Jesus saith unto them, Did you never read in the scripture the stone which the builders rejected, the same as become the head of the corner? This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. <clears throat> okay, so what Jesus throws out this sentence. Um, when the Lord therefore the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? Okay. Um, so they respond, you, you know, they killed your son. They put themselves so much forward that they literally choked out the son. And he will, what is it, the wording here? He will uh, miserably destroy those wicked men. Okay? But the next verse, the next verse, that's the end of verse 42, right? Well, it's, he goes on to say the rest of the sentence is, and will let out the, the vineyard unto other husbands, which will render him the fruits of their season. But within verse 41, in the beginning of that sentence, is he will miserably destroy those wicked men. Their emphasis is on what's right or wrong, good or evil. They killed the son and da-da-da-da. Okay, well, I know that God will take care of all of that. But that shouldn't be our emphasis. Our emphasis is uh, the stone which the builder rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. Hallelujah. You know, that's, you know, the, believe it or not, the, they didn't murder Jesus. Jesus gave himself sacrificially to the Father. You know, and you can either be murdered or a murderer or, <laughs> or Jesus, the firstborn son. You can give the father the firstborn because the firstborn was dedicated to what end? Anybody? Sacrifice. That's the, from the very beginning. That was the, that's always been, well, before the beginning before the beginning because it's it's a part of God the, the, the way that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit operate. Um, so, so um, <clears throat> Jesus says to them based on their response, he will miserably destroy. And Jesus said, did you never read? Have you never read verse 42? Okay, now that's, that's the story Jesus is telling. That's also the story Jesus lived. The question is still, what is our story? Is it going to be to let the firstborn son be given to the glory of the Father and see it as something marvelous in our eyes? And see it as the Lord's doing in a marvelous way? Well, that's what it, it's exactly what it is. It's exactly what it is. And there is a place, uh, well, that's a ridiculous way to put it, God is filled with this reality. This is his reality. This is not our reality. We are self-protective. We, we are Cain. And we will kill him and say, this is, this is marvelous in our eyes. <laughs> exact opposite. And we don't just kill him again. He's not standing out here. We kill him and others. When, when someone else manifests the firstborn, that jealousy arises. And then, you know, we start, we start caning out. 
God help us. <clears throat> so, so I wrote in verse 42, Jesus is saying that the living firstborn did not gain the inherited inheritance and the blessings, but the dead son did become the firstborn. In other words, the living son in this story that Jesus is talking about, he's saying, this is marvelous in our eyes. This is the coming forth. This is the true coming forth. This is the, the, the proceeding forth with the heart of God. And whatever, how it, however things fall in the earth, in heaven, there is great rejoicing in the heart of the Father because of the selfless giving, not the murder, because you can't murder the lamb, not the lamb of God. You can't murder him. He gives himself over and over. And every time a situation arises, he gives himself, you know. And I know, because I used to say it in my early going when I was learning this, well, this isn't fair. Why do I always have to be the one to die? I said that to God. And he said, he said to me, well, you're the one who claimed you wanted the son in you. That's what he said to me. And I went, oh, how do you argue with that? You know, do I stop asking for the son? You know, well, you know, pet my flesh or, or make me feel comfortable or put me in a better light or put me in a better situation or, or fix this or fix that. And he says, no. Did you never read? He could say that to me. That should be my story. I should hear him say this to me. Did you never read? The stone which the builders killed, crucified, or, or rose up in a field and slew, or all the stories that we're going to still yet get into with the same pattern. This should be our story. But we have to write this story ourselves. We have to write it on the fleshly tables of our heart. We have to make this reality. But this is not the reality of our old nature. This is not the reality of our pride. This is not the reality of, of anything that is natural to us. It's not. And, and it never will be. So there, there has to be a, a cross for that as well as a cross to glorify the Father just by a sweet savor offering. For ye are dead. And your life ain't you. That's Texas God talking there. Your life ain't you. Your life is hid and you don't even know who it is or what it is. But when he appears, when he is made to, where you can see him and understand him, you're going to be like him. God is calling to hearts. He's not, he's not trying to form churches into cool little groups that are religiously um, uh, being a testimony in the community. You wonder why people persecute me. But he's not. That, that's not what he's trying to do. If he was, I would work harder or would have worked harder. <laughs> I know better. I know better. I know what's in his heart. And I know that to get there, you've got to go down, not up. <laughs> See, he... he he tricks all of the prideful, you know, those that are full of themselves or, the, or that think that what they have is really just what the Lord needs and what the church needs. He tricks them into not having a thing, ultimately. You're just playing with air. You're playing with shadows. But to find him in this way it becomes marvelous in your eyes. It's not, you know, you say, well, you know, if you were the stone that was rejected, you'd say, I'm rejected. Right? And that's what it's the stone which the builders, the builders rejected me. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. The builder 
Rogers rejected me. I could play a huge part for the Lord. People would really be touched by my special abilities. Well, guess what? You are not the stone that God wants to build with. Not you personally, I just, <laughs> my eyes just, I make statements and I notice I'm, they've rested on somebody and go, no, wait a minute, I'm not, you know, this is as the Lord leads you in your heart. <laughs> but we're not that stone, but we can become a living stone added to that. And that's what he's trying to build, folks. This is the church that he's trying to build. This is the body he's trying to build. This is, and yet every stone ends up being rejected. You, st you say, well, where's the, well, then where's this church at? In the eyes of the Father, it's, yeah, it's in his son, and it's being built up in him. God is calling forth hearts toward that end. So, this is the Lord's doing. I love the way that's worded, don't you? This is, wait a minute. This is the Lord's doing. That almost sounds Texan to me. This is the Lord's doing. You need to back off, buddy. This is the Lord and his doing. You know? But we, but we continually focus on the rejection and not on the Lord's doing. And meaning, if he's working it with his hands, it came from his heart. See, we're so involved with his hands. What are you doing here? What are you doing in the group? What are you doing? Well, I'll tell you what he's doing. He's trying to bring us to rejection in the spirit of what this is talking about. So that the son, the dead son, not the living son, the dead son... Because that's what he's talking about when he says, this is the Lord's doing. This is the Father's doing. He, he's, he, he offered up his son. And the son went into the death freely. Yes. Hallelujah. So I wrote, what does this mean? It means that the younger son did not gain all the blessings of life because the elder son went into a death. Okay, maybe we should, this is wrapped tight up here. <laughs> yes. Okay, so while the chalk is arriving on what we want to see is two sides to this. We need to see, um, a, a, I'm going to put it to you like this. We need to see a death that applies to the firstborn, which could be Abel, and we need to see a death that applies to the elder son. Okay? All right. So the firstborn, uh, let's just put him over here. This is not the firstborn by birth order. This is the firstborn of God's heart. It is that thing that goes into rejection and death um, uh, to, to be marvelous in the eyes of the Father. And then there's this, this other death that we'll, we'll call the elder son, but it is Israel as opposed to the firstborn coming out of Egypt. Okay, so, so we talk about death. Okay, so 
The elder son says, well, I lost out on being a firstborn. I lost out on all the benefits and all of the things, but I'm, I'm in a death. That's why, that's why all this happened. And he calls all of that this kind of death when it's not this kind of death at all. There's no marvelous in, my, in his eyes. There's no head of the corner that's rejected because it is selflessly giving itself. It's been ripped off. Ripped off. Well, this isn't fair. Da, 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 da. And, and not fair, you know, the old snot fair, goes, goes through the mind constantly. And what's wrong? Why this happened? And who's to blame? And all of this. And it rolls and it rolls and it rolls. But it, it anoints all of this rejection because it's not anything like Jesus, not like the Lamb. It anoints that as a death. When it's not a death, it is that God does not accept it as the firstborn. Thank you, brother. That's good. It's good, isn't it? And it's, it's a premise that if we don't understand then we're all in danger of anointing something that God says, I hate that. I, I rejected that. You know, I allowed this firstborn to be rejected so that he could show forth the fruits of the vineyard. But this one is full of weeds and bugs and hard ground and everything else. That's not God's death. That's not the lamb death. There is no way we should put anything honorable into that. The only thing this, this elder son should do is see what is virtuous, enable, this is what Cain should do, and turn around and offer to God what he did in the same spirit. But, you know, to sit there and call this, everything in that that's a God saying no, 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 well, this is a death no, it's not. All right. So now, it's a very long sentence. It means that the younger son did not gain all the blessings. Okay, so this elder says, I'm, I'm in rejection because I'm in a glorious death when the elder son is in rejection because he wasn't the firstborn. But he says, but the death that I'm in here is the thing that's blessing Jesus, the self-giving lamb. Thank you, Scott. That's right. It says that in, there, in the heart. It says this is the thing that's making this thing shine and grow and be blessed and that I am blessed. Let me tell you, not one of you or me, Cain or Abel or Seth to come, in itself is the firstborn. Jesus is that, and you can't do anything to add him shine and da 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 da, except get out of the way. <laughs> this is just a little part of that sentence. It means that the younger son did not gain all the blessings of life because the elder son went into a death based on not being honored as the firstborn. Because that's all this death is, is, is just not being honored as the firstborn. Every aspect of that is just not being honored as the firstborn. And it, the attitudes and the, the viewpoints and the, the uh, things that necessary to speak out to someone else, well, I'm in, a, I'm in a glorious death. You're better off just saying, I'm a wretch, and for God's sake, Jesus, be formed in me. I can't seem to get past this part, and it's, the, it's not even, I've got four or five paragraphs here, but I can't seem, did you have something? Could you open this real quick for me?
Yes, Robert, that's great. And, and the truth is, it's also the epitome of the parable of the vineyard because they didn't have a clue. And they're going, well, he ought to just deal with them. You know, they could see the story of this that's a story Jesus tells. They could see it as this, this death, which is not a death, is just God's wrath, as it were, or rejection. Even if he doesn't rain down wrath, you know, you're not the firstborn. Um, they could see it in the story of the, as it were, the Bible, Jesus being the Bible and the story coming out of him. They could see it correctly, but they could not apply it to themselves correctly because we justify ourselves. We have to justify. We have to be right in some way. You know, the best thing, don't be right. Don't be left. Don't be good. Don't be evil. Be dead. A, a good death opens not its mouth. It doesn't have to justify, and the lamb doesn't. You see, the, this, left, this death over here of the firstborn, he doesn't justify. He opens not his mouth. He doesn't have an attitude. He doesn't go, well, you people shouldn't be doing this to me. I'm the son of God, and, I, and, this is, and God's going to get you. Oh, my God. That is venom and garbage all mixed together coming out of a human mouth that claims that it's this dead when it's so pure we should all fall on our face and say lord form form this this this, fir this firstborn son in us <clears throat> all right still working on this <laughs> it means that the younger son did not gain all the blessings of life because the elder son went into a death based on not being honored as the firstborn, based on feeling rejected by God and others by, by being placed in a lower seat. Folks, I've said this before, and I'm sure it's worth nothing to anybody that just cannot see Jesus. The lower seat is the honorable seat. And God will exalt. I don't, even, I don't even know how to fully explain this. If you take the lower seat in the right attitude, you're not biding your time going, well, I can't wait until they finally see how great I am or that, you know, you know um, whatever, you know, or maybe I'll never go up. But uh, this isn't right, you know. I'm worth more than this. The lower seat, folks, is the greater seat that, and it's the only seat that God honored. All right. Thanks, Jim. This is good night tonight. Thank you, people. <laughs> it's that's right. It's the only one God honored. Wow. But see, even that explanation, it doesn't get it. You have to see it in light of the lamb who, who came down and became as a man and then got lower and became as a servant and then became as a criminal and a heretic. And then God would say as he died on the cross, have you never read that the stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. This is marvelous in our eyes. Whose eyes? Well, the few of us that see it. <laughs> marvelous. You talking about lower seat being a problem? Try death. <laughs> you know, try try a cruel crucified death. All right. So did I finish that sentence? Yeah. Okay, there's more sentences. <laughs> For the elder son, those things were not some sort of spiritual, God-glorifying death, but came about strictly because he would not die. The elder son would not die. Cain would not die. He would not be crucified as the firstborn. He wouldn't. And that you say, yeah, yeah, I would because I, I, I took this death 
oh, you didn't take it at all. You didn't take it at all. You, you missed the spirit of it. You missed the God-glorifying fact of it, and yet you're calling it God-glorifying. For the elder son, those things were not some sort of spiritual God-glorifying death, but came about strictly because he would not die, be, be crucified as a firstborn, but chose rather to put to death, to crucify those who did enter death as a lamb. The elder shall serve the younger. So why was the younger given so much attention, blessing, and approval by God and man if it wasn't by means of a spiritual unselfishness on the part of the elder son who was rejected by God? Do you understand what I'm saying? If it wasn't, if, if all this was, that was coming on the firstborn over here didn't come from the death of the firstborn who, who didn't die the proper death, then where did it come from? Is that a good question? Amen. Um, it came about strictly by God who saw that the younger was willing in a right spirit to be given to a proper God-glorifying death. It is the blessing and the right of the firstborn. That comes from God alone. Do you hear me? That comes from God alone. There is nobody that can bring the firstborn glory except the Father. Oh, my, 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 nobody. Nothing that we do in that sense out of this kind of a death. Now, if Christ is truly in us and it's not mixed with all this stuff that's going on, a big mixture, you know, then it is this son giving himself in death and God will exalt him. Again and again and again. It's the way he works. Yeah, Scott? Because the death really isn't meant for you anyway. You know, you, you know I, I prayed this today. I said, God, I am Cain. I am blind. I am uh, useless. Um, but your son is everything to you. And so I don't ask for you to do anything to me except reveal the joy of your heart within me to do that and and don't anoint my words tonight I've said that somehow Jesus said my words when he speaks are spirit and life and I said tonight let them get spirit and life amen Many times no one sees the death of the firstborn as spiritual. Do you realize that? Because they will not open their mouth to justify themselves. Incidentally, this very act is one of the major basis upon which God decides who is the firstborn. Because they don't open their mouth. But, but Cain can't keep his mouth shut. Adam can't keep his mouth shut. If you can't publicly justify, then you'll go to individuals. All right, well, I think it's in here, so fasten your seatbelts. <clears throat> um, consider Jesus on the cross, Stephen being stoned, Joseph in all his plight. Father, forgive them. Lay not this charge to their account. Okay. So, so let's say that the elder son, every once in a while, when he's in a good mood, can say that. Right? Because, you know, we, get, we go through our little, and then we, go, we get spiritual for a moment or whatever. 
Lord, lay not this to their charge. But then later on, what comes up is, well, they shouldn't have done this, and this is wrong, and this is unfair, and this is, this is that, and, that, and all of that is proof. These, these little moments don't prove anything. Yes, Lord. <clears throat> all right, so... Um, let's go to, I only got a little bit of time here, because, but I've only got about 500 more paragraphs. Let's go to Genesis 45, and let's look at Joseph. Because Joseph is such a good example of this. Isn't he? Okay, we're going to look at verse 3 through 8, and I'm going to read rather quickly, so sorry, but, <laughs> sorry, Patty, but I need you. Okay. <laughs> Genesis uh, 45, 3 through 8. <clears throat> and Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph, that my father yet live, and his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, come near to me, I pray. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now, therefore, be not grieved. So he didn't say, I'm, I, am, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you, you uh, what was the word that, um, I can't say it, angry with, so, uh, anyway, who, who you betrayed or whatever. He didn't say that in a, an accusing way. He said, I'm your brother. Or, you know, um, whom you sold into Egypt. Now, therefore, be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves. God, come on. At what point have you done that? And if you haven't, then let's all get to let's get up and go after it. Yes. Amen. 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 Um, for God did send me before you to preserve life. He, see, he sees it completely different. Yes. Praise God. See, yes, he, he goes, this is marvelous in God's eyes. No, it's not. I'm rejected. The builders rejected me. The builders are rejected. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Big time. <clears throat> For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in which there shall neither be uh, ear uh, nor harvest. And God sent me before you to, pres to preserve you, a posterity in the earth. Oh, my Lord. And God's, um, uh, verse 8, so now it was not you that sent me hither. But God, okay. That's that's a is that a clear enough statement? Yeah. This is the Lord's doing. Yes. Okay. Well, then why would we whine and kick and scream and blame and 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 boil and all of this over God's doing, unless we're a rejected firstborn, rejected from the firstborn? That's the only reason why we do it because we're rejected. No, so I'll, 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 I'll uh, sanctify the death. <laughs> you can't sanctify this death. It doesn't bring forth anything but murder and right th or anger. And We're going to keep going through the Bible here and seeing story after story where this is seen. All right, verse um, 11 and 12 now. Oh, I'm sorry. Genesis 47, so two chapters over. And verse 11 and 12, Genesis 47. And Joseph placed his father and his brethren and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt in the best of the land, in the land of Ramses, as Pharaoh had commanded. And Joseph nourished his father and his brethren and all of his father's household with bread according to their families. Now, I didn't, I didn't have enough room to put all the good stuff he did he gave them this, and he gave them that, and he gave them this, and he gave them that. All right. 
so now let's go to Isaiah 5, verse 1 through 7. Are we having fun yet? Oh, yes. <clears throat> Isaiah, Isaiah 5, <clears throat> verse 1. Now will I sing to my beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful hill, and he fenced it, and he gathered out the stones thereof, and planted it with the choicest vine. That's Jesus, the true vine. <clears throat> And built a tower in the midst of it, and also made a wine press therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? In other words, he gave us Jesus. He gave us the cross. He gave us his heart. He gave us his word. He gave us his spirit. Oh. Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes, and now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof, and it shall be eaten up. This is this condition here. This is not a, a, a sweet death. For the firstborn to bless and to shower blessings. <clears throat> I will take away the hedge thereof, and it shall be eaten up, and break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down, and I will lay it waste, and it shall not be pruned nor digged, but there shall come up briars and thorns. What are the briars and thorns? Well, this isn't right. This isn't fair. Well, that was what they did right there. That's just you know, this and that and that. It's, it doesn't even know what the real issue is. Like the, like the, like the parable of the, of the vineyard, they didn't even get it. They could see clearly when it applied to someone else, but to them, oh, well, thank God this doesn't apply to us. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the men of Judah his pleasant plan. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression. For righteousness, but behold, a cry. And not a good one, not one after, after the Lord. So I'm trying my best to get wrap this part up here. And we still got a few more minutes, if you can believe it. <clears throat> in the case of Cain and Abel, in his anger, Cain kills God's choice for being the heir. Cain rose up and slew God's firstborn. Yet in death, the beloved son would forever be immortalized in the first parent's hearts. This will happen. Abel will forever be immortalized in his parent's heart. Now, we haven't gotten into that, but I'm starting to set it up. We're going to see that this... This glory doesn't come out of Cain and his death that wasn't a death. It comes out of the parents, as it were. It comes out of the father. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Okay? Yes. That's, and that's because the parents or the father sees this situation for what it is. And they're going to take extraordinary measures to make sure that this continues. Okay. Let's see all that. Um, how much more was this son, this beloved son, in his innocent death immortalized? Hebrews 11.4 says, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts and by it being dead yet speaking. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll catch back up right along in there next week. So I am very thankful that somehow I, I, 
I feel somehow that the Lord stopped the sun because this felt like it could have been several hours packed with stuff. Mm -hmm. And he stopped the sun from moving so we'd have enough time to slay some enemies. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Wasn't that great about Joseph? Yes. No death that works in a human being is perfect. That's just a fact. We have our moments, we have this and that. But I will say from what I know and from my experience and from what the scriptures say that there is a glory that rests upon you. There is a glory that rests upon you. And it is not... Um, it is not filled with wrath or thoughts of abuse or of mistreatment. It is seen for the most part as truly the, the doing of God and your mind, your heart. You have to be in tune with his mind and his heart and when, when you go into that death. And if you go into it with that, it will expand as you're in it. And you will grow more into that. But if you go into it not with that mind and heart, you're going to go down. More. It drags you down unto an unholy death. It, it, it vomits on you and you vomit it out to others. So God, in his mercy and in his loving kindness, is saying and imparting the things that are important to his heart. Once again, why? Because he cares. Not, not because we're rejected. I mean, I see the father going out, the prodigal going out to the elder son. I see it in so many examples. He just keeps on reaching out. He just does. We can fail so many times, but we have to realize, well, what shall we say? Shall we continue to kill the firstborn? You know, in us, in that, in that sense. <laughs> this elder son did it himself. God didn't kill it in him. He had the opportunity, came to be the firstborn, and he didn't. And all the way through, all the way through, the elder son and the prodigal son story and all the other stories, it's going to be the same thing. God calls us, and yes, you can, you can violate him you can violate his innocence. You can violate his continued stretching forth of nail-scarred hands to you. But there has to come a day, sometime. I don't, I don't know what day that is, but there has to come a day where you just go, I'm sick of this. I really want the Lord. I just, I, I'm going to change my focus. And I'm going to go after him with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength. Oh, my God, that's the first commandment. Yes. Instead, but see, going after him with all your heart, soul, and strength means you're going to have to go what he considers marvelous, the things that are marvelous in his eyes. Well, what is marvelous in his eyes? Crucifixion? No. No. There were two other guys crucified beside him, and it wasn't marvelous to him. This was marvelous because it was the right kind of death. Yes. That's the only thing that makes a difference. And it makes a difference in God's heart. Now, 
You can, you can argue with me, not that anyone is doing that. You can argue with me over that. But I'm telling you, from my understanding, and not that it counts as anything, <clears throat> this is the heart of God for every one of us. This is what he's trying to build. We think, we think he's trying to build the church. <clears throat> but he's trying to build us into this spirit. Amen. That's that's why I said, did you never read? The stone that was rejected has become the head of the corner? And I don't know if I've said it at this point or not, but I'll go ahead and say it and close with this. Did I Have I mentioned Stephen to anybody? Stephen's death was perfect. And... The church had just begun. It was just brand new. And he handled it in that spirit. And Jesus stood up and yeah. said, My Lord, this is the first stone to be placed up right next to me in this building. The first one. A living stone. A living stone. He's living it. Not a, not a doctrinally sound stone. A living stone. Well, What's it living? The very thing that's the chief cornerstone. Hallelujah. <laughs> this is marvelous in our eyes, isn't it? Father, we just thank you for your continued faithfulness and care. Your loving kindness is certainly better than our life. And we thank you and we seek, we seek you with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our strength. We're not playing and we're not just trying to get down the road with something. We want Jesus in this manner and we want you to form him in us. And we want you to do that. We know you've got to break down hedges and knock down stuff that we put up, walls that we put up and, and justifications that we have continually said over and over as if they were our mantra just saying them over and over and making them holy when they're not holy. And, and uh, Lord, you, you, you can turn even the hardest heart. You can, you can turn these rocks into these, and you can make even these stones praise you. Hallelujah. And we just ask you to continue. Don't let up, Lord. Don't let up. Don't let us pass through this again like we have. Don't let us do it, Father. Help us with all the might and all the power and all the angels, anything of, that you've got at your disposal, throw it in our direction. And Lord, that we may, that we may decrease to your glory. And with that, Christ may finally find room, habitation in us, in this spirit, in this spirit, in this spirit, in this spirit. In this spirit. Oh, and, and then may May it be so marvelous. I want to see your eyes when it starts coming forth because you said it's marvelous in your eyes. I want to see your eyes when it starts coming forth in this, in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, I want to see your eyes. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we have now officially read that the stone that was rejected, you've made the chief cornerstone. We've officially read it. Not, not just read it, but we've read it. And we want you to write it on the fleshly tables of our heart. Mm. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Blessed be the precious Lamb of God, the Lamb slain, the Lamb slain. And Father, may we be like the disciples of John when he said, Behold the Lamb of God as he walked. And those two disciples walked behind him because the Lamb, the living Lamb of God is going to walk to the altar. And may we follow him there. May we follow him there. 
And may the end result be the sweet, sweet savor of Christ that ascends unto you from, from the altar. Mm -hmm. Not from the walk, not from the Lamb's walk, but from the cross. Father, we are determined not to know anything but Christ and him crucified. We're, we're fighting off all our concepts. And we're asking the Holy Spirit to go to war inside of us. Go to war, tear down and break down so that you can build up after your image. Mm, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, our Lord, oh, Father, we want to see your eyes. We want to live to see how marvelous it is in your eyes. Hallelujah. We reject our thoughts. We reject our justifications. We reject the things that we've allowed to rule over the Lamb, to rule, and yet, sanctified as if it were the lamb father we repent we are we are not worthy to be in your presence but you told us repent and turn unto him we turn our hearts from these these wicked ways We don't blame anybody. We, we see it as your hand, and we see it as, as clearly meant to work for us, the very thing that we are crying out for. We don't want to reject your, your methods while crying out for your, your means, your plan, your son. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your lamb. Blessed be your altered lamb. Blessed be the slain lamb of God. Oh, Father, there are thousands upon thousands and millions and millions before the throne of the slaughtered lamb worshiping and saying, worthy are you, not us. And oh, their praise is not for what you did, but for who you are and that God exalted you because of that sweet selfless way that you have within you that that doesn't have to blame others doesn't have to wrestle does not have to justify does not have to have everything fixed the way we like it we just want to we just want to see that it is your doing and when we do, we will no longer wrestle with it. We will say, this is marvelous in our eyes. Marvelous in our eyes. Thank you, Father. Faithful, faithful to your Son. Oh, faithful Father. Hmm. So, Father, in closing, your Son is in us. Your Son is in us. Don't be faithful to us. Be faithful to your son in us. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're for it, Father. We're for it. Hallelujah. To you be all the glory, the power, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen.